We're going book shopping with my husband, going to the library, and we're going to drop off some books into free little libraries in today's video. So make sure you subscribe because there's new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and I hope you guys enjoy. I have some books I need to take back to the library along with a big stack of books over there that I need to take back to, or not take back, but drop off in free little libraries. Um, this right here is the books that I got from the library and I only ended up reading one, but I was out of town for a part of the time. So I think that that's like why I didn't end up reading all of them. I read Cleek Cute, really enjoyed it. Thought it was so cute. Um, didn't end up reading Unrealistic Expectations by Andy J. Christopher. I did not read You Again by Kate uh, Goldbeck and I didn't read Technically Yours by Denise Williams. But that's the beautiful thing about the libraries. I can literally go back and get them again and it's literally gonna be free. And these are also in pristine condition. Like they just came out. Like literally this one came out like two months ago. Um, so yeah, I love my library for that. And I read one of them and I feel like that's a win. So we're gonna take these back. Um, but we're gonna go book shopping with Brady today, I think. And I'm really excited for that because it's Valentine's Day, which is why I'm wearing pink. I love wearing pink on Valentine's Day. And I feel like I just love like the girly, the romance, all the things. Um, but I'm also wearing shorts today, which I probably don't need to because it is a little chilly outside, but that's the Midwest in me where I just like want to wear shorts and I feel like the faster I wear shorts, the faster summer will come. So anyway, let's go take these back to the library. Um, I think I'm gonna drop off the books in the free little library first and then go to the library, drop these off, and maybe pop in and see what they have and then we'll head over to the bookstore with Brady. This is the stack of the books that I'm gonna put in the free little library. This one right here and this stack right here. So all of these. I've been kind of scouring through my shelves and just like unhauling what I don't feel naturally gravitating gravitating like naturally what I'm gravitating towards there are some on the shelves and I'm like I don't know if I'll gravitate towards it but I still want to keep it just in case like uh heart bones by Colleen Hoover I don't know if I'm gonna read this like I just don't I feel like I bought a lot I bought almost all of my Colleen Hoover books um in I think 2020 or 2019 when I first really got back into reading and I feel like I enjoy some of her books but some of them I don't and so Part of me is like, do I need to keep them? I don't know, um, but I'm keeping their, them there until I'm 110% sure that I want to give them away because I can always give them away whenever I want to. Um, so yeah, let's head to drop these off into free little libraries. I made it. Um, so I'm outside the school. They actually moved the little, um, uh free library to another spot because they're doing like renovations on this school so um i'm just gonna be like walking over by where the football field is which is fine i have a ton of books here i don't really know how many i have um but i have a ton so i'm gonna show you guys all of these <laughs> these books these are literally from my bookshelf like these are literally from my bookshelf um i've been just like going through so many books and i think because i read into the dark I realized I don't want to read books just to be like reading three star books you know like I want to read five star reads so I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen I think sixteen or seventeen um but we're gonna go through these really fast before I take them out there um, I have One of Us is Lying. I feel like I picked this up when it was like super hyped up on Book Talk. I'm not saying that any of these books are bad books. Like I think that these are good books. I just think personally for what I want to read, I've really been enjoying diverse reads. I've really been enjoying books by indie authors that are not like super, super hyped up and not that there's anything like wrong with that, but I really like books that are not super predictable. And if they are, I'm finding that I've been rating them like three, three and a half stars. So I'm like, oh, I can kind of see what's coming. I love a very passionate romance. Um, I've, I feel like I've always loved fluffy reads and I feel like I always will, but I feel like now when I gravitate towards fluffy reads, I want to read a book that isn't super hyped up because a lot of the plot lines are super similar. So like for me, it's like if I'm going to read a fluffy read, like let me read one that's like underrated because then if someone has read example Better Than The Movies by Lynn Painter, I can be like, hey, this book is similar to Better Than The Movies. If you like Better Than The Movies, you'll like this book and can hype up that book if that makes sense, especially because the plot lines are so similar, like Nerdy Girl, um, popular football player. You know what I mean? Like it's a lot 
lot of similar vibes. So um, I am putting these two books in here, A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime by Monica Murphy and Things I Wanted to Say. These books go together. This is the first book and this is the second. When I bought this, I did not realize that these go together. I thought that this was the first book and it's the second. I don't think I'm ever going to get to reading them and they've been on my TBR for literally so long. Um, I have The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. Um, I loved the first book, I think, or I don't know if I read the second book. Um, it was really cute. It was fluffy. It was fun. I think I rated it three and a half stars, but I feel like this one will probably also give the same vibes. I have Everything I Know About uh, Love by Dolly Alderton. So many people love this book. Probably a great book. I just don't feel like reading self-help. Like, um, I am really enjoying, like I read Dear Black Girls by Asia Wilson. That one was a great book. Sorry, there's a train. That one was a great book because it felt just like a diary entry and not like a self-help book. And I feel like sometimes these self-help books give self-help. Um, I also have Lotus. This is the second book after Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman. Still Beating was fine. I just don't think I want to keep reading the series. I have The Wedding Party by Jasmine Gallery. I was almost really like on the fence about this one, but I decided to give this one away because I've read Drunk on Love by her. I read The Royal Holiday by her. Um, I've read By the Book by her. Three incredible books, and I still have this and The Proposal and um, I think When We Were Dating um, on my TBR, and I feel like, oh, and I've read The Wedding Party by her too. So I've read four books by her, and I feel like um, I do enjoy her writing, but I haven't read some of the popular ones, like The Proposal that's on my list. Um, so so I'm gonna let this one go to someone who will probably maybe have never read anything of hers and hopefully will fall in love with it. I want to make sure I added in diverse reads along with these um, other books that are like super hyped up or whatever because I want people who are finding these books in the free library to have diverse reads. I have Getting His Game Back. Um, this looks cute. Again, another fluffy read. Hostile Takeover, I'm sad to give this away, but it's just like so beat up, like on the corners, it would drive me nuts. So I feel like someone will really like this one. So I'm giving that one away. These two go together. Um, this is by Chloe Lee's The Wrong, Two Wrongs Make a Right and Better Hate Than Never. Again, I want to give good books to the free libraries. Like these are good books. Like I don't think that these are bad. I just feel like if they're not like five stars, if they're not four stars, like they can go to somebody else. Like I don't have to read them. Like there are so many books in the world. There's no way I can read them all. I do not have to read them. I do feel kind of sad. This book was $17. Like I bought these books. So it does make me feel good that like I bought these books and they're going to a good home that someone will probably end up reading them. And it just makes me happy. Um, the Devil in Blue Jeans by Stacey Kennedy looks like a fluffy, sun, fluffy fun book. The Invisible Man. I know you guys said read this book, but I just cannot get into it. And why am I trying to make myself read a book that I'm not excited about? I don't know. Like, I literally don't know. So I'm not going to read that one. Um, or at least not soon. Uh, the Teacher by Freedom McFadden. I also own this. I just shared in a haul that I bought this, but this one came like beat up and I actually bought two by accident. Literally, I did not do this. Like, this is how the book came. There's like even like a mark right here, like a pin mark. So I don't know if somebody read this book first or whatever, but like, this is a brand new book. Um, and then the last two books that I have are um, a Flicker in the Dark because I knew I had a second copy of this. I bought this book whenever I was on my um, little bookstore hunt with the girlies in the mountains. And so whenever I bought this, I knew I had a copy at home and I was like, oh, perfect. I'll give it to a free little library. Didn't really need to buy it, but I feel like if I, like I used to in the past every month go to bookstores to go shopping for books. And now it's like, I'm just going to shop off my shelves and like, I don't know, give books away. So instead of going to the bookstore to buy this book for someone, just took it off my shelf, bought the other book, and I have it on my shelf. It doesn't really make any sense, but whatever. Um, someone's gonna get a brand new thriller. And then I also have Between Love and Loathing. This was recommended by Sister Christy, um, but I, I read Butcher and Blackbird, and that was a lot for me. It wasn't bad, it was a good book. Like, the, the romance was really cute. I really enjoyed, like, the um, love story, but the other stuff was a lot, so I feel like her recommendations for books that are outside of my genre are a lot for me. So I um, want to stick more to the recommendations that she gives me in my typical like genre, like the fluffy fun romances. Um, so yeah, these are all the books. Let's go take these out and put them in the free little library. I filled this up three weeks ago it is completely empty. Like literally there is not 
well, there's one thing in here. There's like an underwear book for little kids. And then there's like a book on creation in here and that's literally it. So we're gonna fill it up again. I think it's like so sad that everyone does not have access to books. I think there's just something, I don't know, just like very sad that like this might be the only book that someone has access to. And when I even think about the library, like yes, people have access to the library, but not everyone has the ability to get to the library. You know what I mean? So this is the football field and this is the high school over there. And obviously kids have to legally go to school. And since they have to legally go to school, that means that they legally are gonna be here multiple times a week, which makes me happy. So they will hopefully have the opportunity to like read some of these. And again, um, not everyone has access to the library because you have to have like a vehicle to get there. And if you're in high school, you might not have a ride there. So anyway, we're filling this up almost completely full not as full as last time but still very full and i have a box from an author she sent me some books so i'm going to come and fill this up again soon but literally it it was completely empty after three weeks which is wild right here fucking around is a book that me and Taylor or me and uh, Alex are gonna read and I heard you on the phone with her talking oh you did <laughs> yeah this is literally like yeah, we're gonna pluck around the it's, book it's like 600 pages of like straight sweat <laughs> also can you guess what this is about hockey no it's a why choose romance yeah. which you guess what that means uh... <laughs> It's like, why choose? Like, there's two guys on the <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna finish it. <laughs> Alex, I think Alex is gonna like it because I feel like this is her. <laughs> I feel like this is her type of... It's on of... my face, yeah, like... I don't uh, think you have anything. Uh, it was just a weird angle. Thing. Yeah, because you were that point. close to the camera. <laughs> but I don't think that I'm going to like it because I've never read a romance like that. I found uh, Butcher and Blackbird, and I didn't even realize that Butcher and Blackbird was a book that is, um, like, in Barnes. Like, I didn't think that it was even in at all. Like, a lot of these indie books, I feel like, don't even make it. Um, speaking of books I didn't know are here... Elle Kennedy, she's been getting her covers changed. This is Girl Abroad, and I've never read anything from her, but so many of you guys have said the deal is really good. So part of me is like, I want to read the deal just to see what the hype's about. Because um, I've heard that, that series is good. But Sister Christie, she was saying that the series, the deal is good, but she didn't like any of the other ones. And she feels like the author didn't really like... I don't know, I forget what she said. Um, she just didn't really like the other ones as much. And she, I think she said she felt like the author was trying to create what she thought people would enjoy versus like actually writing what was true to her. Something like that. Um, but I kind of want to like read this. It says, it's these small exchanges that keep my head in the fog. The small expressions of his desire. It does a number on me. Everyone loves a secret. This looks really good. I've never read anything from L. Kennedy. I feel like this could be a good one. I'm a firm believer. If the cover is cute, I'm buying it. And this cover is cute. This is making me want to literally buy this book just because the cover. I don't even know what it's about. Okay. Based on this cover, do you think that I would like this book? You ready to see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Based on the cover alone, it's called Seven Rules for Breaking Hearts. Okay. Three, two, one. I love how your eyes are like searching. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So many books here. Like I've never seen this one before. May the best man win. This looks cute. Together they'll find out what a crown is truly worth. Okay, this book also looks really cute. It's Last Chance Books. I don't know what it's about, but literally the cover of it. Madeline Moore feels most like herself at Books and More. No, literally same. All the How I Met Your Mother lovers. <laughs> you know you know. Yep. 
<laughs> they have the true love experiment and it's in paperback and it's like a different cover than the hardback one this is cute i like the like rainbow color on this one i feel like based on this cover i want to like this one it says the heart wants what the heart wants by Karen cole when when i was five years old i told tor and grace we were going to get married someday he'd been my best friend my protector and my rock since the day i was born but during my senior year our relationship slowly changed silly conversations morphed into serious heart to heart innocent friendship turned to stolen glances then one day an unexpected kiss changed everything while that kiss was all i'd ever dreamed of it knocked tor clear off his, his axis his strong moral compass makes it impossible for him to accept our feelings for each other because not only am i 18 and 15 years younger than him i'm the one person you should never ever want 15 years younger see i should have known because on the front this says that people who like um or the author penelope douglas said that angst was incredible and that's the author who wrote credence is like the book i have not read yet but it's i think it's like is that the cousins yes it's like the cousins okay, i have to read this part to you of the book it says tor is my father's best friend my pseudo uncle Neither one of us can stand to betray or hurt my dad. That's why they can't be together. But we can't keep our relationship hidden forever. Will there be a way for us to find our happily ever after or will we all be torn apart? She's 18 and it's with her dad's best friend. Yeah, hopefully torn apart. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a problem. That's We're a problem. Against you. Yeah. I feel like I'm just leaning into all the books that I've never seen before. This says Liar by Tate James. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Stalker mail? uh one thing's for sure archer and his boys made a huge mistake when they decided to keep me from the truth they thought they could play me but now they're about to learn that they met their match no one stabs madison kate in the back and gets away with it um okay they're bringing out the books that give summer like lucky bleep day and the only game in town these literally are giving summer and i'm here for it. Just got done with a workout and I feel so good. There is something about a workout that literally gives you like so much energy. Like you'll feel tired right after you get done, but then for the rest of the day, you just feel like so good, like in a good mood and stuff. So if you are not working out, I encourage you to move your body. You don't even have to go to the gym, just like move your body more. But I got back and the first thing I wanna do is, well, for one, I wanna show you the haul, the books that I got from the bookstore, but I also want to, um tell you what brady got me for uh my valentine's day gift and i want to pick out a book for one of my friends at the gym i feel like it's really hard because there are so many good books on my shelf i don't know like her vibe like i don't know if she is like a spicy type of reader if she is like a romance with like um you know, like cry your eyes out type of reader. Like I literally don't know and neither does she because she just started reading. These are the books I'm thinking of picking but I'm not sure yet. Like I really don't know and it's because, so I think I shared with you guys one of my friends who never reads books but she was telling me how she likes true crime podcasts and I was like, oh, you definitely would love reading so let me get you like into some thrillers. She read Never Lie, Love Never Lie. Um, she read The Couple Next Door, really loved that. She's read like a lot of thrillers that are like fast paced love them she started um the last thing he told me i think that's what it's called she wasn't a huge fan of that and she said it was like a little bit slower pacing and so then um she i think her husband is like in the i don't know if he's like in the military or like police academy or something but i know he's like leaving for a training or something for a few months so she's like i want something that's gonna like give me like happy feels like a romance y'all i am nervous i am nervous because so she is like in her early 40s or like late 30s. I'm not quite sure like the time, like age, but she is someone that I think would really love romances, but I don't know for sure and she doesn't even know. So um, I can't decide like if I should give her, like I've already decided I for sure want to give her a romance that's set in a small town. I feel like she'd really like that because like we live in a smaller town. She's also from a small town. Um, I also think that she would like books that are fast paced because the thrillers she read are fast paced, but it's hard because she's never really read romances. So I don't know if she will like books with spice, but I feel like if I give her a book that doesn't have spice, and this is the caveat, like this is the problem that I have with a lot of like authors, because I feel like it's almost one or the other. It's like, 
if you don't have spice in a book, there might be like a heavy plot line, but like it takes a while to get into. But I feel like if you do have a lot of spice, usually those are the books that are super fast paced. So there isn't really a happy medium. Um, so I have a couple options. So Things We Never Got Over was not my favorite read by a long shot. Like it literally wasn't, but the writing is super easy to read. The reason it wasn't my favorite is because one, there's a lot of spice in it. And two, Knox is literally like a 40 year old man and he like pees outside at one point in the book, but it's giving backwoods, not backwoods, but it's giving like country small town. So I feel like she would like that. But again, I don't know about the spice, which makes me nervous because I do not want to put her off of romance, you know, like she loved the thrillers I gave her. I don't want her to be like, oh, like I don't like romance. I only want to read thrillers. So. Um, I have that. One of the girls at the gym, she was like, oh, you should give her Ellen Hildebrand's books, which I think would be a good option for someone who's not a new reader. I haven't read Hildebrand, Hildebrand's writing, but I feel like the age range is like a good fit um, for like Ellen Hildebrand's books. But I feel like Ellen Hildebrand, Emily Henry, um, those authors are incredible, but I feel like their writing is almost, I don't wanna say advanced, but like if you're a new reader, it can kind of be daunting, especially because they're big books. Sometimes they take a while to get into. I feel like she'd like Emily Henry's book, like the storyline, but I don't know if she would stick around long enough to read it. Um, and again, I think I need to give her like a fast paced book. So I also have Love and Other Words. You guys know I love this story, but usually when I recommend this to people, they're around like my age or like, mid 20s, late 20s, early 20s. And I feel like we're still so closely connected to like our, I don't know, the feelings that we had when we like first fell in love. And we're like in that hopeless romantic era. I'm not saying that when you're in a different age, you can't still like connect to that. But I almost feel like the writing in this is so easy that someone could say like, oh, well, maybe that's elementary for me. I don't know. So. I love this book. You guys know I'm obsessed with it, but it is very easy, easy writing, which I think is why a lot of people like it, but I don't know if it's too easy, you know? Um, so there's that. I also have Big Little Lies, which she said she didn't want to read thrillers and she wanted to read something different because she was like, I feel a little scared by myself reading um, books whenever like my husband's like not home. It's like a little scary reading super scary books. So I feel like this is a good medium because it's not a crazy thriller where you're like looking around your shoulder, but it still has that like aspect of something crazy is happening in the town. Um, it literally says in the back, a murder, a tragic accident, or just parents behaving badly. What's indisputable is that someone is dead. So it definitely like has that thrilling aspect to it, but it's like more in like a something happened in town, but you just like don't know who did it. It's not like a scary look over your shoulder type of book. So there's that. And then um, these two books, and she said she wanted romance, but sometimes I'm like, I feel like I, I know what you want. Like I know what you want. I don't know, maybe I don't. But I also have Same Time Next Summer, which I feel like gives a similar vibe to um, Emily Henry's writing, very, very similar. But it is, um, it's more, like less wordy, I guess I'll say that. It's also shorter. Um, this book is only 285 pages, which I feel like makes it more fun to read. So there's that book. And then another one I was thinking about is, before I show you my last book, which you probably already can see it, I was thinking about Happy Place because sometimes you don't know what you like until you try something. So I was like, maybe Happy Place would be good. Um, for you know her to read because it's not like so heavy on the romance. But then part of me is like, I almost feel like this is too much. Like I feel like I feel like Emily Henry's writing is a little daunting for a new reader. That's just my take. Um, I feel like if you've read books in your life and maybe you're getting back into reading, it wouldn't be daunting. But for someone who's just like brand spanking new, you like never read books. You've read your first like three, four books in the last like two months in like pretty much your lifetime that I think it could be daunting. So I'm gonna leave that one. And then I also have Archer's Voice, which this is another option. But again, this has spice in it. And it's just so hard because I feel like the books with no spice are good, but they almost, not all of them, but a lot of the ones that I have that I could recommend, um, like uh, Reggie and Delilah's You're Falling, or Buy the Book by Jasmine Gullery, which is right here, or, um, any of the books by Lynn Painter. I feel like all of those, they're all YA, you know? 
So it's very hard and I take my recommendations very seriously when I'm recommending books to friends um, because I know that I could be like the make or break for whether they decide to read another book or whether they decide they are like not into books or reading or reading a specific genre. Um, so I always try to think like, what does this person like, like? So I know for her, small town romances, I feel like she'll really enjoy. These are the books that I've decided I'm gonna give her. There's actually three on each side and two books on each side that I haven't shown you guys yet. So I'll show you in a second. But this is the fast paced side. Very fast paced, but these do have spice. These are regular pace, but no spice. So it's kind of like, I don't really know what she likes. So I'm gonna kind of tell her that. I'm gonna give all of them to her for the weekend. She's been reading really fast. Um, with the thrillers and I feel like if she just finds a book she likes she could definitely want to dive in so with love and other words um this one is literally my favorite book so if she doesn't like it well one of my favorite books if she doesn't like it I'm gonna be so sad but again I don't know if spice is for her but it's super fast paced but but if she likes fast paced books she'll definitely like these but I just don't know if she'll like like the what's in the book they're all small town romances which I think she will really enjoy and then things you never got over by Lucy score and the last book which is a wild card Reminders of him by Colleen Hoover. I feel like Colleen Hoover's books are the perfect gateway books for new readers because they're super fast paced. Literally, the beginning of this chapter, let me read how it starts out, I kid you not. It starts out with, there's a wooden cross staked in the ground on the side of the road with the date of his death written on it. Like, and it says, Scotty would hate that. I bet his mother put it there. Can you pull over? The driver slows down and brings the cab to a stop. I get out and walk back to where the cross is. That's literally where it starts. So you're kind of like, Whose cross is it? Like, why is she on the side of the road? Like, you already are invested. And that's what I think makes Colleen Hoover's books very, like, interesting in new readers. But again, she has tons of spice in her books, so I don't know if it's gonna be for her, but she loves fast-paced books. She literally put down another book that I gave her because she said it wasn't fast enough. This side is, like, the regular pacing books, but they don't have spice in them, or at least, like, a lot that I can, like, remember. Um, I love this book. Um, I don't feel like it's super wordy either. This also, I think, is similar vibes to um, Emily Henry's books. So... I got that and I also again wanted lots of like small town type romances. Um, I also got Big Little Lies because I think this is a nice bridge between a thriller and a romance because there is like a romance in this. And then the last book that I got that I didn't show you guys is To Sir With Love. Her writing is super similar to Colleen Hoover's writing in a sense that it's very fast paced but it isn't, it doesn't have spice. So I guess I could put it in this side but it doesn't have spice. So I feel like this honestly would be a good starting point. Um, but I don't know. It just it really all depends on like what her interest is and like what she likes. But I feel like if she doesn't like spice, this is a good stack. If she likes something super fast paced and likes spice, this could be a good stack too. I am really excited to show you guys what I got for um, my little gift for Valentine's Day. But I also want to show you guys or let you hear what Brady got me. So he got me some flowers, which literally made me so happy because I uh, love white roses and he knows that I love white roses. And literally in a text message, he was like, um, a lot of the time you'll let the dead flowers like sit in the kitchen too long. He's like, so these, they're like forever roses. So they'll literally last forever. So I'm really excited about that. So I'll always have white roses in my kitchen. But the gift that literally made me so freaking happy is, and you guys know Brady is just like literally so book coded so book coded for christmas he got me um magnolia parks into the dark and it wasn't even released yet um i think i've shown that to you guys before like the book and the binding and everything how literally the back of the cover and the side wasn't doesn't even have anything on it because he literally told the people in new york he's like i will go there and get the pages and put it together like just to get this book to her for Christmas. He also has given me like a notebook with letters in it and every anniversary he like writes letters to me like telling me how he's felt about the year, how he like has felt our love grow and like the things that we've done and like all that kind of stuff. Just so many special thoughtful gifts. So every year I'm like, he's not gonna top it. He also um, took me on a little like bookstore scavenger hunt and he made this binder where um, there were like a bunch of different books in it and a bunch of different bookstores and all these different like things that he wanted me to pick out. I've shared all this on like TikTok and like Instagram and everything so go and like hang out there if you guys want to see everything in real time. But this gift takes the cake, I think. I don't know, like all of them are so great but this one, very special. So. 
he was like, I've like written letters for you and stuff. Like he wrote me this poem whenever my dad passed away and I haven't even shared it anywhere on the internet and I don't know if I will or not because it's very personal to me, but um, he wrote this uh, poem and I read it, literally bawled my eyes out and it's like a reminder that like my dad still is here, but he's here in like the memories that we share. Um, so he's like, I've already like written you things and like I wanted to kind of do that, but I wanted it to be different. So what this man did, <laughs> this man reached out to someone in Nashville and asked them to write me a song and obviously he like paid for it. Guys, literally this song is called Dear Shaughnessy. So before I um, look through here, I'm gonna like play part of the song. But if you wanna hear like more of the song, head over to my TikTok and Instagram because I go through like the entire day, like all that we did for our day because we did other stuff too yesterday that I didn't end up vlogging. Um, so if you want to like see, just hear and see everything, go there. Um, but let me play this for you guys. It's so cute. Speechless, literally speechless, literally speechless. Like, I literally got Brady a uh, Theragun for his um, like muscles. So I was like, your muscles are probably tight after you like box in the morning. He gets up at 4.30 and goes to boxing and then he works out before he goes to um, his office. And I got him that, a water bottle, some chocolate. So I'm like, you know, it's Valentine's Day. Like, it's cutesy stuff. And I was literally shook, like actually shook. And if you guys want to hear that, it's, um, I'm pretty sure it's on Spotify. I'm not really sure. Um, he sent me like the link in my phone, but, um, I will, um, share this over on Instagram and TikTok. If you guys want to hear the whole thing, that's just like the first bridge, but the whole song has special moments from like our entire relationship. Like, um, it talked about how like we used to stay up talking all night, go to Taco Bell, like that was a big part of when we first started dating, we would go to Taco Bell together um, because we were friends first. And I swear someone needs to write a book on our like relationship because we have so many fun like memories and stuff and we've been together since 2012. So it's been a really long time, like literally 12 years. Um, and we have been married for five. So. <laughs> that just was such a special gift and I always am like like how does he top it like I literally don't know um but he also got anything that I wanted in the bookstore we want we didn't have a ton of time because we ended up going to see a movie last night which I did end up really enjoying the movie um thought it was super cute it's that one that everyone's like watching right now it's like a romance that's out I forget what it's called but it's like it's super cheesy but like in a good way um we saw a romance and then we also saw um or we went to taco bell like old times and just like sat in the parking lot and he was like oh do you want like your typical order like two mexi melts and a cheese to freeze and i was like i think they discontinued mexi melts they don't have those anymore like we used to get them literally in like 2010 and 2011 before we started dating because we were friends first so they literally don't even have those anymore because it's literally years ago 
But um, the first thing that I picked up is uh, something that isn't a book, but it is from Barnes. And it is this candle. It's called Enemies to Lovers. And on the front it says, smells like heated fights and steamy nights. And the smell is vanilla, orchid, and jasmine. Guys, this smells so good. This reminds me... It reminds me of like a uh, fragrance. I can't think of the smell. It's like a very well-known fragrance. I literally just can't think of the smell off the top of my head. Like something from Le Labo. Like very expensive, like smells really nice. I love this candle. These candles are a little pricey, but I feel like the smells are really unique, so I always love them. And then the book that I got, you guys are gonna be so surprised, is The Deal. Now, I literally gave this to a free library and I feel like I gave it to the free library because I just kind of picked out a bunch of book talk books that I feel were like not overly hyped but like I'm like am I ever gonna actually read this like I don't know and so many of you guys after I put the book in the free library you were like that book is so good that series is so good you have to pick up the deal like at least read the first book you'll love it they redid the covers which I feel like helps me get more excited to read this book because the old cover had like I think people on it or something I just didn't like that it also has like these blue edges which are so pretty um so this is the first book in the off-camera Campus series. I'm really excited to read this um, and I feel like it jumps right into the story which is something that I also really enjoy. On the back it says she's about to make a deal with the college bad boy. Hannah Wells has finally found someone who turns her on but while she might be confident in every other area of her life she's carting around a full set of baggage when it comes to sex and seduction. If she wants to make her crush's attention she'll have to step out of her comfort zone and make him take notice. Even if it means tutoring the annoying childish cocky captain of the hockey team in exchange for a pretend date and it's going to be oh so good out all garrett graham has ever wanted is to play professional hockey after graduation but his plummeting gpa is threatening everything he's worked for worked so hard for if helping a sarcastic brunette make another guy jealous will lift his grades and secure his position on the team he's all for it but when one unexpected kiss leads to the wildest sex of both their lives it doesn't take long for Garrett to realize that pretend isn't going to cut it. Now he just has to convince Hannah that the man that the man she wants looks a lot like him. So I feel like this would be a good book. Um, obviously, so many people are obsessed with it because not only have they continued with this series, but they also made another series based off of like other characters in this book. Um, and Sister Christy also said that this series was so, so good. She didn't really like any of the other books, but she said that this one was really good and was one that I would enjoy. So um, I picked it up for that reason and I hope that I really like it. Um, the second book I think is called The Mistake. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. It was a little bit different than most bookstore vlogs because obviously we weren't in the bookstore for very long usually and i will link some of my bookstore vlogs below if you guys are new but usually we talk in the bookstore for a very long time but um i was at the library for so long that like we didn't really have a ton of time in the bookstore before the movie and especially after brady gave me his gift he gave me his gift first um we didn't really have as much time because we ended up staying home listening to it and like talking before we went to the bookstore. But it was such a special night and I'm just so, so grateful to have a love that is so freaking book coded and feels like an actual dream. And I wanna encourage you guys to like hold out for that love and like maybe you have it and maybe you don't appreciate it enough like really appreciate who you have and like even before valentine's day i actually started making a list of all of the things that brady does big or small that just like make my heart happy and like one of the things i think i was telling you guys like he did my laundry not that he doesn't do my laundry normally, like I, I'll do his, he'll do mine. Um, but he did my laundry when I didn't have any like clean athletic clothes to go to the gym. He just did a load of my athletic clothes. Normally I would just be like, that's really nice. But like I have started making this list to be even more intentional about being grateful for the partner I have. And I think that that's also good to do with friends too. It's easy to like overlook things like he made me eggs for breakfast one day. Um, he was also making himself eggs for breakfast, but still, I was like, that's super nice. And maybe it could be as small as like the person you're with gave you like a really, really sweet compliment or gave you like the longest hug after a hard day. It's so easy for us to compare who we're with um, with other people and like, especially on big holidays, be like, well, my partner didn't do that and I wish my partner would do this. And like, 
I don't have like book boyfriend like material, but like maybe you do and maybe you're just like not remembering or not focusing on those small moments because when we think about reading romance books, like when we read a moments, rom a moments, when we read a romance, I feel like the things that stick out to romance readers the most isn't even the big grand gestures, like we love those, but it's the small things, like the little itty bitty moments that the author pulls out that you're like, wow, this person really cares about them. And they're like thinking about them when they're not with them. Like maybe your partner like sent you a really cute text or a really funny meme that like connects you to like an old memory. Like all of those things are like ways to show love to someone. And maybe they're small and something that you don't focus on often. But I think that if you start making a list of those things, you'll realize how they happen a lot more than you remember. Cause I started doing that. I was like, dang, like this man, he's constantly showing me love and like, it's so easy to overlook it. And so it just makes me want to show him love more. And then I'm sure in turn, he will continue to do the same as he always has. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, the next video coming is a really, really fun one. Like really, really fun. And I feel like you guys will be really excited for it. And then we're going to be going book shopping again. Um, I think the week after next, like a long book shopping vlog. And um, we have lots of fun videos coming, like another 24 hour reading challenge. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys will continue to stick around and I'll see you guys in the next one on, what day is it? On uh, Tuesday. Bye guys.